crafty friends, this is the Paper Chef here. In today's tutorial, you will learn how to cut out stamped images using the Brothers Scan and Cut CM350 or Scan and Cut 2. Some of my viewers requested me to use to do more tutorials on the CM350 because I've been doing a lot on the SDX lately. But don't, not to worry, if you have an SDX, you can still follow along just fine because all of the things I'm showing you will work on that machine too, all the settings are slightly different. I'm going to take a piece of 12 by 12 cardstock. Okay. <clears throat> this is exciting. I'm using Birds of a Feather. It's going to be released on September 4th in our 2019 holiday catalog by Stampin' Up. So I am a demonstrator. I'm allowed to get the, what's it called, the pre-order. So I'm allowed to order these ahead of time. Okay, so I'm gonna take, I'm gonna start from scratch. We're gonna take these out of the case. Now I have, these are what's called cling stamps and I've already mounted three of them or three of the cute little critters or little birds and then I'll show you how to mount the last one because I like to just infuse my tutorials with extra little tips along the way. So I'm gonna take this little Christmas chick. Okay, he's so cute, he, she, and I'm just taking them out of the package and be, our cling stamps have stickers on them so they they stick on both sides and I just stick them to my acrylic block and I'm using acrylic block C for this one. Then I'm going to take my memento black ink. I have a couple of these. Let me see which one is a little better. This one, this one's a little better. It's not as, it's not as sloppy. Okay, so I'm going to take my ink and I'm going to tap, tap, tap into my ink. Okay, and I look and I make sure I have good coverage. I'm using Whisper White cardstock memento black ink. Why? Because I like to use the Stampin' Blends to color later. I hold it for about three seconds, lift it up. Okay, I always stamp more than one because if you're gonna use your scan and cut, tap, 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 then you should always stamp more than one because of efficiency. In fact, I would usually just stamp an entire 12 by 12 sheet of these at the same time. Okay, let's just do two for good measure. Oops, I don't need to put the lid back on. We're using that again. But I do need to clean my stamp and because of the lack of room on my table, I can't show you that right now, but I've shown that in other tutorials where I clean it using this thing called the Stampin' Scrub. All right, moving along. Take out my next one. I'm gonna take out the little pirate, the, uh, the, the duck dressed as a pirate. So I guess you're seeing that you can use these for more than one season, right? You have Halloween, Christmas, Thanksgiving, and Valentine's Day. <laughs> so you have four things covered in the stamp set. Okay, let's see. He will fit on the same block C. So let's just put the little pirate there in this making sure he fits. And I already have the sticker, it's mounted. Tap, tap, tap onto the Memento Black ink. And we'll just stamp a couple pirates. Okay, there we go. So we have those, we have our little duck pirates. Again, clean your stamp. And now let's stamp the turkey. Now the turkey's a little tricky, so that's where I'll show you a tip I use. So I didn't even notice it at first, so I'm gonna stamp, I'm gonna stick the turkey on this, let's see, this is stamping block D. And what I didn't notice at first is that his little apple pie is, is the little turkey's apple pie has some little steam coming off of it. So the first few I cut out, I didn't cut out the steam. Very easy to cut out the steam. I just didn't even notice it was there until after I had cut out my stamped image and I started coloring them. And I'm not gonna recolor them, I just used them for the projects, which I'll show you. I always show projects at the end. I'm tap, tap, tapping my turkey. And so I'll show you the projects I made and he looks cute with or without the steam on his little apple pie, but we're gonna cut out the steam. We want the steam to be cut out. Again, clean your stamp and then now I'm gonna show you how to mount the, a stamp. So you can somet you sometimes order from Stampin' Up. We have giant, large wooden stamps. That's one kind of stamp we have, they're background stamps. But most of the time we just sell what's called cling stamps or acrylic stamps. Acrylic stamps are kind of see-through. I'll show you those later. Uh, these are called cling stamps and they're made of rubber and they're really high quality. So to take, so you're gonna take your, this is our chicken and I haven't used the chicken yet. That's why I haven't used it at all and I wanted to show you that like you can use it right out of the container. Some stamps you can't and you have to kind of condition them but th these work great right out of the container. So here's our little turkey. I mean a, a chicken, no, uh, what's it called? A rooster, a rooster. You know me and birds, if you've been watching my channel, I don't know nothing about birds. Okay, so anyway, let's let's take the, the peel, peel this off. Now, if you just wanna use it as is, you're good. I mean, you could actually just stamp, you could just stick that on, it'll cling and it'll work just fine. 
And that's what I was doing for years because we didn't make good stickers for them. Tell you the truth, it's dampened up, you know, really, really, it had dropped the ball on that before. But now, this year, they came out with these cling stamps, which are incredible. So now I actually use the stickers because they stick so well, you can barely get them off. So to get the, the stamp to stick onto the sticker, you'd open up your cling stamp case and you and you look at, and you there's a there's a place where you peel it off. See, and it's, it's split, so it comes off easy. So it's a double-sided sticker. So I'm gonna peel this away and you throw that away. That's the little covering. And you take your stamp and you're gonna stick it right onto here. Let me make sure I'm in focus. And I usually, I do this, I don't want to, I don't want to smear my stamps either. So let's, let's just show you this. So I'm going to stick, make sure I'm in focus when I stick this down and I'm going to zoom in a little bit. Okay, zooming in. All right, so I have this little chicken and I'm going to stick him onto the sticker, but make sure you're standing above it when you do that so that it sticks on perfectly. Okay, I just, that's the way I do it. I, there's no right or wrong way in crafting and you might have another way of doing it. I'm gonna zoom back out. Okay, so that's that's how I get my stickers to stick to the cling stamps. I just started using them this year. I just sort of taught myself how to do that, and that worked. Now this side sticks really well, and you stick it to your stamping block. So we'll do our chicken now, and you're gonna see that it works right out of the box. Okay, that was stamping block D. I'm putting back down my little sponge that comes out of my, my sponge comes out of my little stamping block case, and I'm gonna stick, I'm sticking this um, chicken right below the turkey. And then we'll go back to how to fix the turkey, but I just need room on my table. So when the first time you use a stamp, it might take a little extra ink. That one doesn't look like it's going to take any extra ink, but just for good measure, tap a few extra times because when you first use a stamp, you want it to kind of soak in a little. And it worked fine, okay, right out of the box. That's what I really like about these cling stamps because when you take out an acrylic stamp, it's just, you know, sometimes you have to use Versamark or condition it or get it to really, it takes a few tries to get it to, to stick right. Okay, I'm happy with my chickens. So now, let's we game, again we would clean that, and we're we're good to go. And same with the sentiments, you you mount the sentiments the same way as you mount the stamps. I'm going to cover this up. Okay, I'm going to get rid of. Like I said, I have to just make some little bit of room, <laughs> so I don't get ink all over myself. I always save. By the way, I save these little rubber. Um, I guess it's like a stencil where the, where all the stamps fit back in even though I store them right on the edge of the case I still save this piece of rubber because if you ever go to resell your stamps like on eBay or something later I don't know for some reason people ask you. Oh, do you have the? Do you have the, the rubber and you're like, well, yeah, I save everything But I don't know why people want that. But anyway, I save it in case probably never gonna sell the stamp set Unless I'm desperate for money because I absolutely love the stamp set. All right, so let's let's show you about this turkey now so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a pencil and I'm gonna connect the steam to the pie. Now, you're using a pencil because you're gonna erase it later. A number two pencil works fine. So just get the steam to connect to the pie. Because you know what, Stamp the Brother Scan and Cut is doing exactly what it's supposed to do, which is when it, was, when it didn't cut the steam, it was doing exactly what it's supposed to, which is cutting around the turkey and around the line, the connected line. This is not connected, so of course it didn't recognize that. So you have to connect your steam. So again, just get your pencil. Whatever stamps you have, you could be following along with whatever stamps you have. Connect your little, connect your piece so it's all one piece. So now we got our turkey. Okay, gobble, gobble, we're good. And we got our eight things. Now we're going to take our mat. Our stamps have had a little chance to dry. We're going to attach, when you use the CM350, you can attach it either way. I mean, it doesn't matter because your, your mat goes in. See, you got an arrow there or an arrow there. You can put the mat in either way, which I like, which I really like about it. And I'm just going to lay that down on the mat and I'm going to rub my hand there or, or a brayer. Let me grab my brayer. Sorry if I shake my camera. But try not to roll the brayer over your stamps because this is a brother, a brother brayer. Because if you roll it over your stamps, you could smear them if they're not all the way done drying. All right, when you're scanning your stamped images, never cover up the, the black marks, the registration marks. The scanner needs those to have reference points. You're going to open up your brother's scan and cut. You're going to load the mat. When I load the mat, I put one hand here, and I put one hand on the load mat button. So I'm going to show you that. Pull this closer so you don't miss anything, and I have to tilt my camera a little bit. Okay. So here we are. I am 
putting my hand there and I'm gonna load the mat that's this button here okay it loaded straight now I can get in now I can actually bring this a little closer so we have our settings I'm sure I have a stylus somewhere here's a stylus over here and when you turn on your machine you're gonna see scan and I have to turn my light away for a bit my light gets a little bright okay so you have pattern and scan you are going to select scan because we are directly cutting out the stamped images we are going to use direct cut this is asking where to temporarily store your images you're going to store them on the machine you could store them on canvas but that, that's overkill we don't need to we're only using this today right now for this moment store them on the machine always use black and white recognition mode whenever you can it saves time it's more efficient and because we have well-defined black lines around your stamped images that's all you need is black and white recognition mode color recognition mode takes a lot longer but you would change it in there if you want to change it we're going to say start it's going to scan in your images so here's one of those images and what we want to do is put an outline distance around like i did for this little chick an outline distance gives you a little white around the outside although it will cut straight along the line let's put a little outline distance around it okay so here let's focus in so you have a, did a great job recognizing everything so we're going to say okay that's the first thing and now you'll see the lines it did mostly everything it didn't get that second turkey it's probably too close to the edge but that's why i said let's stamp two so you know seven out of eight is not bad we'll show you how to get rid of that parts of that turkey because we're going to we can try to cut it again later first thing is first i like to ignore object size like I like to go in to ignore object size and get rid of some stray bits and I'll show you how to get rid of the rest of the turkey if he's still like that apron I'll show you how to get rid of that another way okay ignore object size good if you're using a, an STX 125 you have to ignore objects later I'm, or you have to do this I'm sorry not this part later you have to do the outline distance a little later I'm gonna put an outline distance of 0 0.04 and like I told you to add the white part you can frame the part you want to scan and cut Although I, be, I didn't have anything over there, but if you did have things and you could frame the part you want to scan and cut. Okay, let's preview. It did okay, let's say okay again. And now I want to get rid of this little part of the turkey because I can still cut out that turkey later. I don't want to, so let's get rid of that. I'm going to go into this edit, which is the little shapes, and I'm going to click on that little apron of the turkey with my stylus, and I'm going to trash it. I also could have ignored object size large enough where that apron would have disappeared but you got to be careful because when you ignore objects too large your actual image disappears that you're trying to actually cut all right let's cut now because I'm using the CM350 again patron requested I have a lot of patrons and viewers like uh, people who support my channel and they're like please go back to using the CM350 I want to talk about the blade depth so you have a blade depth and I get asked this a lot so first of all when you reset your blade depth you have to take your blade out you go to 12 and then you turn back we're for, for whisper white cardstock the regular whisper white we make regular and we make thick whisper white oops ah what did i do let me say okay i think i accidentally hit that little uh settings button okay for the regular whisper white cardstock which is regular i use a blade depth of four so when i'm using designer series paper from stampin up it's double-sided unless it's specialty i use a blade depth of three for designer series paper when i'm using regular whisper white cardstock i use a blade depth of four when I'm using cardstock, like colored cardstock, like I'll show you later in the cards examples, I would use a blade depth of five. So those are the three I use 90% of the time because I do cut other materials. 90% of the time I'm, I'm within three, four, or five. It's good to do a test cut, you know, to determine your blade depth. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and say start. Now it says it's gonna take two minutes to cut. Uh, typically, I'm gonna let that run because it's kind of takes me a long time to edit videos later and I'm gonna let that run this machine's a little noisy and typically it just estimates so it'll be like more than one minute but less than two see how it just jumped to one minute because because it, it estimates it in one minute increments so not bad it's already cut the top two chicks out and I could move the machine away because it's kind of noisy but you know that's okay okay so how do you get one of these holiday catalogs I'm gonna step away is you just go onto the my site paperchef.stampinup.net and I will I'll show you my little sticker for that in a minute you 
then place an order this month during the month of August and you're automatically going to get a couple cute little samples from this catalog and you're going to get a holiday catalog. So the, here's, here's my website. Okay. Place an order. And this is the front. I'm, I'm not allowed to show you the inside of the catalog. I can only show you the outside. And just to make sure I don't show you, I've taped it shut. But that's the outside, that's the outside of the catalog. Plus all of the sneak peeks I'll be showing you through my channel, uh, you're going to get to see a lot of what you could order. And if you want to become a demonstrator, then you're allowed to order early. Maybe I'll get into that later, but right now my things are done cutting, so we need to get back on track. All right, so I see that, um, okay, we're going to say finish cutting. We're going to say, okay, and we're going to let's go, unload the mat. Okay, so now I'm going to show you, so you would take these off the mat like so. Okay, you're gonna peel your cardstock away. And then I'm gonna show you uh, just to peel the, peel this, or bend the mat a little bit, and it'll come right off. You can use your little spatula, I'm gonna show you that, and then I wanna get right into the coloring part. Kinda like a cooking show, I have different parts done. Okay, so here we go. Oops, be careful with that. See, you wanna make sure your little, your little chick doesn't get messed up. All right, so let's let's get into the, now we're gonna move this away, we're done with that. So now the next thing you would do is color. I'm not gonna actually do all the coloring, I just wanna give you some tips. So everyone asks me, I mean this is not, this is I, I would say one of my most common questions. Paper Chef, why do you always cut before you color? Okay, so why do you, so that's the question, I'm gonna tilt my light. Why do you cut up before you color? So there's three reasons I do that. And I have some kind of examples to show you. So here, here's an example. Here's one already colored. All right, so there's a few reasons I cut out before I color. Okay, one, first reason. Not all stamped images. Let me just find something to color this chick with. I'm gonna use some so saffron. Not all stamped images cut out. So if you sat there coloring them and then all of a sudden you, you kept trying, 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 it's just not getting recognized. Different parts of the mat don't get recognized. Different, for different reasons, things just don't get recognized. So, I mean, if I would have spent all this time coloring, I'm using dark so saffron, by the way, for this chick. I spent all this time coloring and next thing you know, it won't cut out. So that's disappointing. So that's the first reason. Next, th next reason, I don't color before I cut. But by the way, there's no wrong, re if you do color before you cut, more power to you. You're allowed to, there's no wrong way to, to craft. All right, the reason I don't is because if you color outside the lines with your markers, then the scanning cut is so good that it'll recognize you coloring outside the lines, and then it will actually scan around your mess ups. So, you know, it'll, it'll make like little, I just call them like little nibs nibs around the sides. So then you have like a little issue. It looks kind of funny. I'm going to put like, so by the way, you sew saffron for that chick. I'm using pumpkin pie for his little beak. And then I'm going to match his little star to his hat. And I'm going to use real red for that. The dark real red. Just so I could show you something we could do with it. So dark real red, but you know what? Use the small side because this is a small little chick. So there's a small side of every one of our Stampin' Blends markers. And there's a large size. There's a good example of me coloring outside the lines, even with the small side. I'm going to show you how to fix that. I did not do that on purpose. And I want to show you, I want to show you that is my second reason for not coloring before I cut. So that's a good example, even though I didn't mean to just mess it up. So if you are going to, if you color outside the lines like I did, that would not have cut around the star. It would have cut around my mess up, my messed up red. And it would have made a little funny looking outline on my star. Okay, so that's so, so. That's why I don't color. Now, the third reason I don't color before I cut is because maybe later on, like for these chicks, I've already colored them, the inside of the chicks, but I'm not sure what I'm going to do with these chicks yet. I'm not sure if I'm going to use them with my Monster Mash Designer Series paper. I'm not sure what if I'm going to put them on these Gift of Fall cards, like I'm going to show you, that look Halloweenish. So I don't know what color to make his vest and hat yet. So I've colored all the parts which I'm going to stay steady, like the red and the punk, uh, real red. I think that was Mango Melody and Pumpkin Pie. But now I'm ready for his, his little, and I colored the little skull with Smoky Slate. But now I'm ready. Okay, so say I use it on the Gift of Fall cards, I might take this like, this is a coordinating color with that. It's a 
Merry Merlot or Blackberry Bliss. And that's the color I would color his vest and hat. If I'm going to use them on the Monster Bash paper, I would use a different color that coordinates with the Monster Bash. Or, you know, I would look up what coordinates. So that's why I don't, so that's another reason not to color. You cut out a bunch of stamped images and you color them later no, based on your project. All right, so what I want to show you now is what's called a color lifter. When you use the Stampin' Blends and you mess up like I did, you use the alcohol color lifter and you just rub it on there. And it takes a while to take effect, but it will lift, or at least it will lighten the uh, red there. I also use it when I actually want to lighten colors, not just erase colors. Okay, so there it is. So now, lastly, I do what I've done to all of my little cute guys, my little cute chicks, is I used my Wink of Stella, which is a clear glitter, glitter, glimmer, whatever, pen, and I would take, and I would take that and put it on the hat. Now, on the other ones, for like the chicks and things, I put it on all, I put it on the whole thing. So for this little chick, I just put it on the star and the hat, the little puffy, the puffy part and the star. Okay, and then I would pop them up with dimensionals and I'll show you my example of that, what I did with these chicks. And then I'll show you what I did with these and, and this guy. So here are my examples, ready to go. All right, whew, I love coloring, but boy, it's a lot of work, right? Okay, but you do, but it's a lot of fun. So here we go, here we go. So I, I first, I'm gonna start with the chicks because that's what I just showed you. So I did three chicks and I made this for a new team member. It, there's a special going on, so there's lots of new team members in because it's $99 to join and you get $155 worth of items for only $99 and free shipping and you get a coupon. I'll have de details in the description. But anyway, my new team member's getting this cute little card. So I use So Saffron, So Saffron. Uh, this one was Daffodil Delight. I use Light and Dark Blends for all my chicks. Then I use Flirty Flamingo for the hat, Light Shaded Spruce and Real Red for that hat. I used Shaded Spruce for coloring that Welcome to the Team. And that stamp set in particular, and I used Real Red for the background and new paper, new designer series paper. That stamp set I have right here to show you. I used a couple other stamp sets beside or aside or I should say in addition to the, the little birds of a feather that the chicks came from. I used for the branch, I used this one. I used this, this branch out of this Colorful Seasons. It's been around for a while and I wanted to show you what the acrylic stamps look like. See how they, they stain? No big deal. They still work great. It's a really nice set, double-sided. and it's But the acrylic stamps are a little different than the cling stamps I showed you earlier. So that's called Colorful Seasons. And stamping your way to the top is something that only demonstrators can get. And it's not just good for stamping, it's good for, I mean, for stamping up. It's good for sending people happy mail. I like to use in happy mail on my mail. Welcome to the team is good for an office environment. And this is just good for crafting and handmade by your biggest cheerleader can go on the back of your cards and things. So that's where I got the welcome to the team for that card there that I'm sending out. Okay, so that was the example of using the little Christmas chicks. I didn't make examples of the Valentine's one yet, but I did make examples of the Halloween. I made three examples. Um, some of these, if you've checked out my, my Instagram or my Facebook public Facebook page, you might have seen these examples. So this is, but you couldn't have seen this part because you can only see the little wobbles in a video. You need a video to see the little wobbles. So I put, I put the little, these are called mini wobble springs. They're available and, and I'll have a link below. I don't, I mean, Stamp It Up doesn't sell them, but I'll have a link to where you can get the little mini wobbles. And um, anyway, so there's a little trick or treat. I'm gonna show you how I did that. Okay, and then I did one more using what's called the Monster Bash Designer Series paper. That's where I got the spider webs. And I'm gonna show you how I got the little trick or treat in that kind of shape because you're like wait what punch is that um let's see i have a a little trick to that so i used what's i used this timeless label punch and here's my trick i'm going to show you the trick from start to finish so first you take you take your stamp and trimmer or it's not a called stamp and trimmer it's just i'm just using my cricut trimmer and i'm gonna take a 1.75 inch piece i'll write that in the description Okay, so let me just take a 1.75. Kind of there goes my microphone. It's kind of hard to do when I'm in the air, when it's in the air. <laughs> All right, so I have a 1.75 strip, okay, of, of Whisper White. I'm gonna put that down and I'm gonna take my stamp set, Birds of a Feather. Here it is. 
and let's see which one we're gonna do. We're gonna do here, give thanks, because I have a project I wanna show you, and another cool product I wanna show you. So we're gonna take the give thanks, and we take that, and we put that on a little tiny stamping block. Okay, like this one. Okay, so here it is, and it is stamping block C. In fact, let's try to put it on there straight. It doesn't matter, because we're gonna make it straight when we stamp it. And let's get a coordinating color. So let's get, I'm gonna use Merry Merlot. Coordinating meaning coordinating with the fall sort of theme. And, and also it's good to use a dark color to contrast. Okay, I don't know if I'm gonna need the little sponge background, but if I do, I'll go grab my sponge. My table is limited right now in the space I have on my table. I'm gonna stamp the give thanks onto the, nope, it worked fine without my sponge. And I'm gonna take my timeless label punch. I'm gonna turn this upside down. I'm gonna open my timeless label punch. And I'm gonna do this like that. So that's how I get the shape that I have for all my little cards here. Whoops, there we go. So it's 1.75 inches. I'm gonna show you that once again. Maybe I'll zoom my camera out. Maybe I'll get this thing a little bit straighter this time. It's a little hard when I'm not standing right above something. I'm gonna hit, I'm gonna hit, click on give thanks. I'm gonna not click on, <laughs> like I'm using a computer. I'm going to stamp give thanks. I'm so used to doing computer tutorials. I'm like, click on this, click on that. <laughs> when we're really just stamping. All right, where's my timeless label? So we're gonna get the timeless label punch. I'm zooming out now to give you a better angle and I'm gonna turn this upside down. Okay, I'm gonna take my timeless label punch. Remember, this is only 1.75 inches. That's how I got that little shape in my cards. I, I placed this into the timeless label punch. I line it up, I center it, and I get those cool little corner effects. Hard to see when I'm at this angle. But we can do this, crafters. We are crafters. All right, there we go. So now I have the shape I wanted. That's what I was going for. I was going for perfection. All right, and that's what we have is crafting. So, okay, so let's, let's take our little, I have a little uh, sponge. Okay, for this little project, I wanna show you in a minute that, and I have a little sponge to outline. I usually like ink around the edges. Here it is. Okay, so now I'm gonna show you one more Halloween thing and then I'm gonna show you this project. All right. So what I'm, I'm just inking, I'm just using some crumb cake or I don't even know, that looks like a green. Maybe I was using crumb cake, but this now it looks like old olive. Either way, you're taking some kind of ink and you're putting it around the edges, some kind of coordinating color. All right, so I wanna show you that project in a minute, but I wanted to finish showing you the last chick project. The last, uh, not chick, he's a duck. See, there I am with birds again. This is a duck project. You get little, uh, these are little tins and I put Skittles inside. And yes, I do pick through the colors of Skittles. People ask me, oh, you, where'd you get these colors of Skittles? Five colors of Skittles come in the bag. I take the red and greens, I use them for Christmas, my Christmas crafts. I take the orange, the, the yellow, and the browns, and I use them for my autumn crafts. And I make all kinds of stuff with them, and you'll probably see those in my videos this season. So that's what I did. That's my third little thing I did with the stamped images using the Brothers Scan and Cut. And now I'm gonna show you what I would do with this guy. The Give Thanks. And I'm gonna show you a new product from our so if you watch my videos, and, if, and especially the ones coming up, you're gonna see sneak peeks from the annual, I mean, not the annual, the holiday catalog. And this is one of those sneak peeks. Not just this stamp set, but this, you know, um, the stamps, some other things that we have in our, that are only in our holiday catalog. So what I'm doing is I'm peeling away some dimensionals. Dun, 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 and I introduce to you the mini gold pizza boxes. These are so cool. Oh, look, you can even see my ceiling. There's such a glare. How cool are these gold pizza boxes? Okay, they don't, you know how I'm always decorating pizza boxes if you watch my channel. You don't need to do anything to these. They're already gold and I'm not gonna do much to them. I'm gonna stick the give thanks on top there, like that. I'm putting my little turkey. By the way, I colored this turkey earlier with fall colors and I put some Wink Estella on the turkey, a little glitter. And that one I forgot to put steam on. That's what I was telling you about. I did forget to put steam on that turkey. When you color and whisper white cardstock, it does have a little bit of a bleed through, but it doesn't matter because we're using some dimensionals. Just stick him onto the craft. And there we have our little 
Thanksgiving box. Okay, let me move my light away a little bit because it's such a glare. And I'm going to show you what I put into this box and then we'll tie it up with some, some cute little uh, old olive twine. All right, so in this gold box, which I think is just cute the way it is, I don't really, you know, it doesn't need much else. I mean, maybe I'm going to add, you know, what I'm going to add is a couple of these guys. I'm going to add, because like I like to add little, I say nothing else, but then I add stuff. Sometimes I, these are like called gold faceted, oops, where's my pokey tool when I need it? There. I like to add some little bling sometimes. We'll do that. But you always, I always add three of everything, so I'm going to put one down there. There. Okay. So now, now he's cool. Now he's, now he has some bling. All right. So inside I put coffees. So this will be coffee lovers. You just put, I have all kinds of little coffee candies from Werther's and from uh, Bali Best. I'll link to some of these, I guess, if you want me to. Uh, people are always asking me, but I always link in the description and some instant Starbucks coffee. And then you should put that, shut that, shove those all in the box, which I've already done. Coffee lovers gift. And shut this whole box. Okay, give thanks. It works for like a party favor on a table. If someone's coming over Thanksgiving and it works as a little cute little gift. So I'm using old olive twine because I, it kind of highlights the apron, which I colored in old olive. I used dark and light old olive. I'm, I don't know how long my twine is, it doesn't matter. Just enough to make a bow. So then you just kind of even that out. I'm gonna make a bow right over the top of the turkey. And I'll move it down later. Like I'm gonna make a bow in the middle and I'll slide it down later. Maybe I'll slide it under the turkey or maybe he'll stay there, I don't know. If the bow looks good there, I'll leave it there. Kind of slide it to the right, we'll see. And I'm tying the bow. Not the best at tying bows. I need one of those bow tying gizmos. Or need or want, all our needs and wants are the same when you're crafters. Okay, so here I'm gonna move that over and we have yet another project made on the spot, except for the coloring. I did do the coloring ahead of time. So that's our mini pizza boxes. Okay, lastly, I wanna show you the other cards made with from this with this little turkey from the Brothers Cannon Cut, and that was, I have this turkey. These, these, these cards, by the way, are only Paper Pumpkin subscribers can get these cards. If you can subscribe now, but you'll get the you'll get the next month's kit because it's already too late for August to subscribe. You'll get, but if you subscribed in August, you can go ahead and order these on my website. And these these are called the Gift of Fall cards. A Gift of Fall cards, and I made them into little. This one's interactive with a mini wobble spring, and then this one. And how I did that was just again just using all kinds of fall colors. I I can't list them all right now. I'd be here forever, and I'm already kind of going over how long I wanted to go. So let's. Just say that I used a lot of fall colors with my blends. Use whatever you have. You can use colored pencils for your turkeys. But I do want to show you the stamp set. So I did, so I used for this, these little leaves, I used the leaves here, this one, this leaf, leaf, or I'm sorry, this one, but he's actually bigger inside the case. And then I used this leaf, which is bigger than the picture, for putting some backgrounds on these stamp sets. So I, I, so you can use other stamp sets in combination with some things you get from the holiday catalog. So I hope you enjoyed all these projects and I hope you'll check out my site and check out what you can get now because there's lots of cool stuff on sale right now for every season. So thank you for watching. This is the Papered Chef.